Hey there, John Larson here for Green Days Group, and I know that I promised in the last video that we were going to dive right into uh, how to create this structure, but I realized that there's one sort of little area that I should probably cover very quickly. Uh, so this is going to be a very short video, but I wanted to give a little more detail uh, about cards themselves because I think that there are some sort of techniques that are pretty important, I want to be sure that you know, uh, because they will influence down the road how you set things up. So you'll note that even though I own the board, every single card has my picture assigned to it. Uh, so basically I assign myself to these uh, as uh, a way to link you know, myself into each of these elements and that's going to become important when we start talking about how to integrate all of this into a uh, calendar. So uh, that's something that's uh, kind of important. But I'm just going to dive in here and we'll edit this particular card. And so you'll see that I have sort of the summary, create general training. Uh, you'll see I have a brief description. Uh, you'll see that there is a log of the various activities that are taking place. And you can write comments and take notes, which is pretty handy. If I needed to, I could create a checklist. But you'll see that I have a due date assigned. So if I click on due date, then you'll see that that due date is here and I can move it around or I can remove it. You typically remove a, de a due date when you're all done with the card because you don't want the system telling you you've got something past due. So a part of completing a card is actually removing the due date. That's really kind of an important little thing that people don't tell you about, uh, but it's uh, helpful when you're trying to keep track of what you actually have done uh, and what you still have is outstanding. So be sure that when you're done with a card, you clear the due date. Now you'll see that the labels for this are work because this is a purely work related thing. Sometimes uh, work and money might go hand in hand, uh, just like sometimes personal growth and health uh, might go hand in hand. And again, you can create th these labels on a board by board basis and have them mean whatever you want to mean, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, but for me personally, you know, this label works well. Uh, and you can also attach files, which is kind of handy. So uh, the attachments can come from your Google Drive or from Dropbox or Box or OneDrive or from your computer. So if you have something that you're working on and you have related documents, uh, maybe a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever, you can bring all of those items in and attach them to the card. And again, from a project management standpoint, that can be very, very handy. And let's face it, when you're managing your day and you're managing your time, there's no more important project than that because that's how you become effective and get more work done. So basically, I highly recommend that you know, if you need to, definitely use this. Uh, and if not, then, you know, skip it. Something else that's really important that uh, you should know about is this idea of more. There's a, a little more link here. And you'll see that when I click on that, uh, I have a couple of different links. So I have an email for this card. So if I were to email to this specific address, and it's a really long one, but if I were to send an email to this specific address, then that email would come into Trello and it would be attached to this specific card. And any attachments that were a part of that email would also be attached separately to this card. So it is a handy dandy way of when somebody sends you an email and you want to keep track of that specific item relative to what you're working on, you can just email it directly to the card rather than taking the time to take each of those individual documents and copying and pasting notes and all that. No, just take the email and forward it to the card where you're working on that item uh, and you're done. So again, trying to make things super easy as best as possible. The other thing that I really love about Trello is the ability to link cards to other cards. And this can be really handy, for example, when you are tracking maybe something that you've given to somebody else. So in this particular case, you'll see that I have this link right here. So if I were to be on a different card, possibly even on a different board, if I were to insert 
this link onto that card, it would create a direct link here so that I could click on it and boom, go right here, uh, which is again very handy in certain situations. And let me show you a specific example of that. So right now I have uh, something that's waiting uh, on others, and you'll see that you know it's just basically a placeholder. I have a logo that's uh, being worked on by my designer and uh, I have that linked to this uh, project. So if I click on this for all of the details, then I will be taken to that specific item and boom, you can see I have all of the details from the customer, I have all of the attachments, I've got all of the notes, the conversation back and forth between me and the designer uh, as far as what's been happening with this particular project uh, and this right now is assigned to the designer. And the nice thing is, is you can have multiple members uh, assigned to different boards and cards and everything else so it's a, a fantastic way to really just sort of keep track on where you are and where you're going so again that was simply done via uh, a link uh, which was basically right here and if I click on edit you'll see that there is that Trello link and what Trello does is once you save this it will convert it into sort of just plain human text so it doesn't even uh, look like anything other than just there's the the description and you go from there so again uh, a little handy trick but hopefully this begins to make sense for you so basically the card is all of the nitty-gritty detail and if you have something that is really complex then it should be on its own card. Uh, where you'll find that that comes uh, frankly uh, into play uh, sometimes is when you have something that is basically a multi-checklist thing. Uh, so where you might have uh, tasks that are part of a broader collection of things that are taking place. So for example, and I'm just seeing, here we go. Okay, so we have this wrap up uh, website phase. So this is in my completed things, uh, but I wanna show it to you just so you can see it. So you'll see that on this checklist, I have these various things that I needed to get done. Uh, and in fact, you'll see one of those things links to a separate card. So you can actually link to cards from within the checklist. So you can begin to see how powerful this can be when you can link from one sort of accountability item into something where maybe it's more complex and more detailed and has its own list of things that need to be addressed. Uh, and one of the other things that's handy is that when you're looking at a checklist, if you've set something up as a checklist item, and you realize it's way too complex, it's something that you know maybe is its own thing, you can actually click on that item and turn it into its own card. So uh, that's exactly in fact what I did here. It started off as a sort of line item and then I realized, wow, this is way more complex. This is something that is frankly unto its own self a, a very sort of detailed uh, kind of a thing uh, and there's a lot of work that needs to be done so it's not really appropriate to represent it as one single item. So basically I clicked on it, I turned it into a card, I took the link to this card and brought it back in to that other list so that I could again have a place to check off once it was done. Uh, but by doing things this way you begin to unpack and, and dive into elements and I don't know, for me I sometimes think of things as being maybe easier than they really are. And so part of our uh, process here as we work through Work the System is, of course, systematizing. It's uh, taking care of all of those details and getting them down into uh, functional things that can be replicated by other people. Uh, and so the nice thing about this process is that it allows you to explore those things. And if you discover that something is perhaps more complicated than you realize, well, boom, separate it out, and now it becomes its own sort of process checklist that you can work through uh, and it makes it you know organizing things a, a lot easier so uh, that's it in a nutshell but basically I just wanted you to see uh, this whole card construct and this idea of being able to assign accountability to yourself and being able to assign due dates uh, and again these things are important uh, because they influence uh, the, the calendaring which I'll dive in sort of towards the end uh, when we talk about sort of third-party apps 
and how they integrate into uh, Trello. So hopefully this is helpful to you and I promise on the next video we will dive into basically how do you create sort of a copy of this construct for yourself. Thanks again for your time. I really appreciate it. Have a fantastic